What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I bought this soon R or soon Dar LED wrist light. I've actually wanted one of these for a while. You may have seen these. I think there's a few companies that make these types of things. I've actually unboxed it here already. This is how it comes. So you actually do get a micro USB cable, this kind of flat white cable, which is kind of interesting and it's kind of different than a lot of the micro USB cables. No big deal, but it's kind of cool. And then some instructions. And I haven't tested this bad boy yet, but I've always kind of wanted these. I always thought it's interesting because flashlights are kind of a pain. I know I like LED headlamps. And in this, I don't expect to change my opinion on uh, headlamps and that where you look and turn your head, I want the light. You know, when I put a flashlight on my wrist, and this is kind of my initial thought, is that's cool. You know, if I'm manipulating things and doing things, I've got light right there at my wrist. But, you know, if I'm looking and I turn my head because I hear a sound, I don't want to have to turn my wrist and, and whatnot. But what changed my mind about buying this, and so I've, I've kind of put that off. These are about 15 or 20 bucks, depending on uh, the company you get them from. But what changed my mind is... I was out hiking, and I maybe told you this, um, we were out in the desert, some buddies, we kind of got lost, we ended up uh, getting caught out much later than sundown, and one of the things that we didn't really have, because we didn't expect to need it, is a flashlight. Now, I was wearing a watch, and I did have a compass. This has both of those, and so if I'm going to strap on a watch or a wristband, especially, you know, the one I had that had paracord. Well, I didn't need the cordage. What I needed was a flashlight. And so this is kind of the same thing. It's I, I, I really feel like if you're not sure you're going to need a flashlight, you're going out exploring, this might be the thing. Strap it on. Take it out there with you. It's no big deal. You don't have to wear a head uh, lamp all the whole day. Uh, and so this might be the perfect thing because you're probably going to have some wrist wear anyway. Now, a couple things I want to point out about this. First of all, it's pretty big. It actually looks like, like a Star Trek prop. And in fact... In Star Trek, I think, in a couple different episodes, they had, like, wrist flashlights. Again, not a huge fan uh, because headlamps are better. But I get that they look kind of cool. The other thing is, if you work in an environment where it's dark a lot of times, you may want a wrist light. You know, like when you're working on uh, looking in an electrical box or uh, underneath a car or whatever. So there's a lot of applications I can see this being useful. I think they also call this, like, tactical. Now, I actually thought... As you can see here, the flashlight, the LED element here is kind of kicked up at maybe like a 40 degree angle. I don't think it's totally 45 um, or like a 35-ish degree angle up. What I actually thought that was interesting is that if I, I thought it was because maybe if I were holding a rifle, you're out hunting or something like that, you're holding a rifle like this, that the flashlight would be pointed in the, the right direction. It does not, and I'll kind of show it to you, but if I had my wrist out like this, like holding the, the far end of a rifle, you know, in the foregrip or the handguard or something like that, the flashlight is actually pointed too far off to the right. It, it never gets to the right place kind of for tactical use in that regard. Now, maybe you don't need it pointed directly forward and maybe you want to make a little adjustment, it's great, but I know that they do make like tactical wrist lights and this doesn't really fit that, that, that mold. So, you know, like I said, when you're holding a rifle, uh, and I'll hold something that it kind of replicates that. The, it is, it's, you're not looking in the right, the light isn't pointing in the right direction in my opinion. Now, the other thing is it's large, it's plastic, so it's not heavy. You do have this screen here, it's an LED and uh, it's backlit. So what's interesting here is there's two rubberized buttons, one on the top and one on the bottom, depending on which wrist you're, you've got it on, I guess. But the one down here, is what turns on this LED element and then the backlight. And it kind of rotates, it turns on the light and the clock, the month and the date, and then click it again and it goes off. So this is pretty cool. Even if you're in the darkness, you can see your time. Uh, you can adjust that, I think, by just holding down the button, I think. So you kind of long hold it down to get in edit mode. You click it to kind of scroll through individually and then you long hold to move to the next thing. See, long hold, change this, long hold. I think that's all we can do. Uh, this backlight is very bright. You can probably tell that. 
I mean, it's almost like its own little flashlight in and of itself. Um, maybe even too bright. I mean, but I guess nothing's ever too bright. But if you're used to like an LED watch with a with a typical backlight on it, this thing is going to be very very bright. Now the top light, the switch here controls this main light and it's in this like silver housing and I was really trying to figure out if this is like an aluminum housing or some sort of alloy or just painted plastic I think it might be plastic it's just not very heavy but I think this little kind of painted lens a silver lens does help because it does make a very bright light again one click turns it on what I've noticed is it turns on this too second click goes into a low light mode and then the third click turns it off. So high, low, and off. All right, so this wrist light has one more mode, at least just one more that I've discovered. So if I turn it on with the top button up here, you can see it says H, we're on high. If I hold down both of these buttons, it goes into SOS. And as you can see there, it's using Morse code to signal SOS. So it's kind of cool, you know, if you needed it to signal for help while you wanted to try to light a fire or build a shelter that's pretty cool and then you can just interrupt it by going back to the the toggle switch like that so pretty awesome now what's interesting is you probably were able to see that this led element comes on now what i think it means is high and it's basically telling you you have an hour and 50 minutes of high beam you know two hours of high beam if i click it again it goes to low and it's telling me I've got nine hours of light and then off obviously, oh, it'll stay off indefinitely. Now, I did charge this up. I just plugged in it the micro USB and the port here on the back. Uh, it takes any micro USB cable. There's a little rubberized plug to kind of help keep it water proof-ish, you know, so it just fits in there. So the times that it's giving me here, I'm gonna say that that is the max time because I just unplugged it before I took a look at this. Now. Last thing I want to point out here is the band. And as you can see, it does have a little slide through. You could remove it if you wanted to put on another watch compass here. And it's pretty accurate, man. Uh, you've got to kind of, uh, kind of be a little ginger with it to get it so that it floats freely. But what I did notice is that it, it does always seem to pick north correctly. So even when I was fooling around with it, uh, sometimes it binds up, but you got to let it float free. And then it does seem to get north. So and there it is um, because you know it's plastic it's lower quality you know these types of compasses aren't necessarily the most accurate thing in the world but they do kind of help again the only issue with it is that you've got to kind of even though it looks like it's spinning free you got to kind of find that sweet spot where it really is truly spinning free on kind of that needle so once you do that it does seem to find north so boom that way north then the last thing we have is a uh, a, a nylon kind of like a thick NATO strap it's it's just tr kind of traditional nylon and in and, and actually if you look at the buckles you know they look kind of like those NATO straps uh, I have no problems with this you know particularly knowing that the the usefulness of this um, type of flashlight is just purposeful right it's just purpose built to be utilitarian and so I like that now the only different thing is I think you and me and most of the world is right-handed now for you lefties, you're actually going to like this because you'll notice that the buckles, which are typically on the top end of a watch for right-handed people, is actually means that you would mount this backwards. So for me being a righty and wearing a watch comfortably or most naturally on my left hand, it puts the buckle on this side. Now it's not a big deal, and while it seemed a little weird at first, it's actually not that much harder, I guess. For me to actually uh, put this on even though the buckle is backwards you know one-handed here and so let me just go ahead and pull it on tighten it down I have about a seven and a half inch wrist I'm obviously doing this on the outside of my sleeve which you know if you are out in the wilderness on with a coat or jacket obviously you're gonna want it on the outside because it's not gonna do you much good under your sleeve and so then you put it on like this and now I've got my super duper light now the other thing is once I've got it on here I will tell you that because even though I thought this little kick up, this angle of the light was more for tactical use like this, I think the reality is that your hand naturally wants to block this light. So it, you, in order to, for it to be useful at all, it's trying to overcome the barrier that your hand falls in. Otherwise, you're going to 
kind of always pull your wrist down like this and look like a superhero and that's kind of unnatural so even if you kind of naturally have your hand in a position you're not blocking that light so that's the point of kind of that angled kick up now i've given you a good walk through let's take a look at this in the darkness all right guys out here with my wrist light on and i'm just going to turn it on because i'm only one hand free but as you can see here uh, you can see that led element and on my wrist and definitely lights up things in front of me very very well you can see the ground in front of me very very clearly and if we look out here at the trees you can see those you know those trees are 30 40 feet out in front of me and you can definitely see them now if i switch modes here which is going to be the most elegant thing in the world to the low setting again this is where i'm going to get it says nine hours of light usage and this is going to be perfect for walking around, hiking, things like that. And actually, what I'm impressed about is that I can kind of drape my arm into a comfortable position next to my body. Um, I do have to kind of cant my wrist up a little bit in order to illuminate in front of me, but that's actually it's actually not that uncomfortable. It's, a, it's kind of like I said I'm a big fan of headlamps, but uh, this one isn't that bad. So. Um, on low beam, really great, kind of 20 feet out, I can still see things. Now again, let me switch over one more time to high beam. And this is pretty, pretty bright, pretty bright. I've kind of walked up on the trees here already, but you can see no problems illuminating a lot of stuff. So I'm pretty impressed with this LED wrist light. Uh, definitely something that's easy to carry around because you can strip it to your wrist, strap it to your wrist, and go on your hikes and you'll have a flashlight with you. And, even though it's a little bulky, super light. Peter Von Panda, out.